În această linie a schimbărilor de paradigmă, l-aș ruga pe domnul Balac, reprezentant al Philips, să ne vorbească un pic despre ce ne așteaptă. Mulțumesc. Thank you. I'll switch to English. I was uh, uh, no, I was um, uh, asked to do so, so I hope it's okay. Um, so thank you very much for um, uh, for giving me the floor. Um, yes, I would like to. I represent Philips Lighting, and I would like to discuss a little bit about the forces that uh, are forcing us to change the paradigm uh, in which we're doing business today. Uh, of course, light it's important for us, for our lifestyle, for energy consumption. But I will not talk. Uh, I'm not talking only. Uh, I will not talk only about uh, the light itself, but about the paradigms. Um, so the first force is the technology, and I will start quoting uh, Thomas Friedman, uh, which uh, uh, he, he was saying that uh, the world is smaller and flatter, uh, and uh, this is because globalization 3.0. Of course, globalization 1.0 was, I don't know, governments, empires. Globalization 2.0 uh, was represented by the multinationals. Globalization 3.0, uh, it's internet. It's the huge opportunity and also threat that uh, the access of internet represents to the standard way we are doing business. Because this, actually, this, this access flattens the world. The, a lot of smart people, that have good ideas uh, can do business without having, um, uh, without possessing a lot of wealth of us or assets. Uh, so in this new world, in this new globalization, uh, there are three fundamental elements that we have to take in consideration in order to be successful. First is uh, we have to become digitally connected, and we heard a lot about this uh, today. Um, everything should be digital connected. Of course, there are some threats, uh, security threats, but even in, in security industry, uh, it's a change of paradigm from need to know to need to share. Because if you don't share, okay, if you don't share, it's, you have a very secure system. But actually, the, the benefits of sharing information are actually bigger than, than the risks. Of course, we have to make sure that the systems are interoperable in order to be able to be digitally connected. Um, second element is sharing resources, and I think from perspective of today's discussion, the, uh, the most relevant is sharing uh, critical infrastructures. Of course, we have um, very easy examples, like for example, Uber, which is a taxi company that owns no asset. Uh, we have uh, Airbnb, which is a you know, travel company which, again, owns no asset. Um, so the entire paradigm is sharing, you know, th the resources you have, being a car, being, I don't know, a hotel. Coming back to critical infrastructure, we are talking about uh, li lighting networks, we are talking about grids, electricity grids, IT systems. So all of these are, represents highways uh, of information uh, that in, in order to prevail, that needs to be shared and used uh, in a shared uh, digital, uh, digital way. Uh, the third element um, is about human resource. Human resource in this new world is becoming more, uh, is becoming more, uh, is paying more attention to inner drivers uh, rather than external incentives. And I, I just want to give you a short example. Uh, some years ago, a big company, Microsoft, invested in uh, uh, something which is co was called Encarta at the moment and, uh, in time. One, they wanted to make a huge uh, encyclopedia. Uh, they invested a lot of money, paid a lot of money to different universities, so on and so forth. What we have today, we have Wikipedia, which is free, which is free and was developed by volunteers. And I just give this as an example, but this way of working and this type of incentive it's really a disruptive factor because we see this approach more and more in any business. So uh, it's, a, it's a very important element to, to be taken in consideration. So that's, that's technology. The second force is uh, the, fa the fact that we have to eliminate waste. 
And of course, here we go going towards the world circular economy. Uh, it's very clear I not insist why we should eliminate waste or, waste, or even better, to put waste back into production. Uh, that's clear. The problem is how we do it. Again, it's a force that, you know, will change the paradigm. Because uh, till now, mo most of the companies are doing, they are point of sales. They are selling products. They are point of sales. Uh, and basically, they want to sell. And what happens afterwards, OK, doesn't matter too much. We have to transform ourselves from point of sales to service providers. Uh, we have to take care of the entire cycle, life cycle of a project. Uh, so this is absolutely essential in, uh, in, uh, in changing of paradigm. We have to look of our clients not as a buyers, but as users of our assets. And uh, in, uh, to, um, to make circular economy a reality, uh, I think we have five business models we have to look at. First of all is products and services. Um, it's, very, it's very important, uh, again, to look ahead of the entire life cycle of the product. And of course, the producers then are forced to do something with the producers after this life cycle. Uh, and this will help actually eliminate the waste. Um, the second element is uh, next life, it's called next life sales. That means really, you know, second health, uh, second health sales. So we start to see, I don't know, car manufacturers which are refurbishing second, hard, uh, second hand cars and, and re, you know, having second or third revenues of course, a discounted value, but really putting back waste into, into the economic cycle. Uh, the third one is product transformation. That means, of course, not all, all the products can be uh, recycled, but for sure elements, there are elements that can be recycled uh, and can create new products from recycled element. Uh, the, fourth, the fourth one is uh, recycling, recycling itself. Uh, and of course, here uh, we can talk about you know innovation technology that you can tra actually transform waste from uh, to be input for another production cycle, or even we can talk about I don't know cogeneration for example. So transform waste uh, steam or whatever waste we have in the production cycle to to put it back uh, to put it back as an input. Uh, and last but not least is the collab so-called collaborative consumption. And this is, uh, okay, uh, again, coming from uh, examples like Uber and uh, Airbnb, when actually, I don't know, you have a car, so you consume it collaborative, collabor uh, collaboratively, so more efficient. But also this is valid for critical infrastructures. Uh, to, uh, I mean, we saw com competitors sharing infrastructures yeah, in telecom, so on and so forth. They are forced to do this. Uh, uh, by, by this change in paradigm, because it's much more efficient to consume in a collaborative way. Um, very short, uh, how this uh, is relating to my industry in lighting. Uh, well, uh, lighting, as I said, it's a critical infrastructure. Just to give you very shortly a few examples, if we're talking about uh, public lighting, street lighting, it's an infrastructure that is there. Uh, and for example, if you want to put a new GSM antenna in, in the city, it's a very big pain. Why not use the lighting pole to do a lot of other things that to illuminate? Like being a GSM antenna, like being a computer, and there are a lot of projects for that. And of course, integrated this, this, uh, this infrastructure with other infrastructures, like, I don't know, traffic management, so on and so forth. And we are going towards Internet of Things, machine to machine. So um, differ, different sensors can take decisions uh, based on, on this uh, existing infrastructure. If we go indoor, of course, we have lighting infrastructure uh, in indoor. And we have, uh, there is new things like uh, power over uh, Ethernet. And my colleague here from Cisco knows very well because we have a lot globally, a lot of collaborations. So because of new technology like LED technology, you don't need a lot of power. So actually you can power on the lighting system through Ethernet. So you can integrate IT uh, and, and lighting infrastructure very well and put it in the building management system. That, that means a smart, uh, smart building. So you can put a lot of uh, the, the lighting infrastructure becomes a sensor infrastructures and helps the building through IT to take a lot of decisions, you, you name it. Um, and I want to close by uh, you know, expressing what I think we should do uh, as a country, I think, 
uh, our focus should be on a uh, legal framework. Because I don't think that today we have uh, the right legal framework to su support this long-term decision and what we discussed, the circular economy. And why I'm saying this is that uh, because a lot of decisions are, uh, are done based on initial investment and not on the total cost of ownership or even more complicated total value of ownership over the life cycle of the project. If you if we thinking, for example, of the EU funding that ended in 2013, uh, things like maintenance, like operating a system, were not even uh, eligible for funding. So uh, what the risk here is that you know you can find relatively easy money to invest in some capex, but then uh, you don't have people to operate. You don't have money for maintenance, and uh, the actual uh, this actual uh, project uh, will not work. So we need to uh, make sure that we take the decisions based on the entire lifestyle of the project. I think this is the key key element that I want to to, to transmit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Balaj. Um, I for for myself, I I acknowledge that you you talked a lot about digital digital connections and the need to share uh, that that for one second one uh, the entire life cycle of a, of a company offering which which takes us to really another paradig paradigm in business and I would not uh, leave aside the the legal framework and again I think you refer to the skills of, of uh, uh, people who man our systems currently um, the need to share and the digital connections, I think, bridges very well to our next speaker, uh, Mr. Dorin Pena from Cisco. Okay, thank you. Um, hello from, from my side, and first of all, thank you for the invitation. For me, it's a great pleasure uh, as uh, the next uh, Asponian Leader Program. Uh, it's a pleasure being uh, here and uh, helping building the, the good society. Uh, my name is Dorin Pena. Um, I run the, the local uh, Cisco office. Uh, I have been doing this in the last uh, two and a half years. And um, um, I think Bogdan already shared some of the ideas that I wanted to share with you. And I, I'll start from this, uh, from this idea of, uh, of digitization. And uh, coming from a technology company, a technology company that uh, currently, I think, uh, supports around 60, 70% of the whole internet traffic. Um, uh, we have a pretty good understanding of what uh, what digitization means um, and what's the impact in our lives. Um, basically, digitization is doing what we are doing right now, what we have been doing in the past in a totally different way uh, using technology. And this has huge impact on everything we do. Just, just as an example, uh, do you know what's the average attention span of a human being right now? It's like eight, eight seconds. And uh, the, the jellyfish, you know, the medusa, has nine seconds. And this has uh, been decreasing from 25 seconds, uh, something like uh, 10, 20 years ago, before stepping into this uh, digitization area. Uh, another fact, so there are studies that say that uh, in three years, three years, so, before we absorb all the European funds in, the, in, this, uh, in this exercise. So in three years, f an average of four out of 10 companies in the top 10 in every industry will not be there, will be dis disrupted. All this because of technology. And if you read the news and if you look around, you will hear concepts like artificial intelligence a robot beating a human being in Go, the famous uh, game. Um, artificial intelligence, um, automatization, outsourcing, um, mobile devices, mobility, things like this. So these are the trends that are part of the, of the digitization process that are shaping our lives. And um, just today, the Financial time, Times was giving this number, 1.8 million. This is the number of jobs that will disappear from the financial sector in the next period because of a new concept which is called FinTech. Technology in finance. It's a form of digitization. So, having all this in mind, let me give you another perspective. 
the local perspective, the Romanian one. It's a statistics that says that in uh, 84 years, this room will be half empty. What does it mean? It says that Romania will have around 9 million inhabitants. And in 2050, Romania will have 14 million in inhabitants. So, now we go to people. The most important resource for a country, or for a society, or for a company, is the human resource. There is the traditional economic perspective from, from Smith, from the 18th century, that says basically you need capital, you need labor, you need land. Um, there is a new concept which is developing right now with all this impact of digitization, and it's around human capital. Ideas will be the most important thing that will shape our future. And ideas come from people. And now the question is, how do we make sure that we get the best out of the people? How do we make sure that we create a creative environment, an inspiring environment, that we make people collaborate in the best way, that basically we take the best of every person? And again, this is not a commercial presentation. I think this is a challenge that on top of the infrastructures, on top of energy, of cybersecurity, of any other things, this is the most important. How do we address the human resource? And um, the title of, uh, of my speech is something around smart spaces, smart connected spaces. Of course, there are technology solutions which address these things. Uh, Cisco has something like that, which is around the, the Internet of Things in providing the access to the information everywhere, anywhere, to any people. And um, of course, technology can be used in this direction. But the most important part is for us to realize that we are growing into a new generation, the millenni millennials. Some of the people in this room are part of this generation, that we behave differently, and we need, we have to, use technology to change the way we work, live, play, and learn. And if I come back to Romania, we have this challenge even more because we have been educated in a system. We were very good in executing tasks, very good. If you look at our scores in math, in, in science, we are very proud that we have programmers in, uh, in, in all kinds of companies abroad that we managed to, to bring outsourcing companies here in Romania. Take it with a bit of salt because these things will impact us in the next 10 years. And these things will, will, will have a big question mark on how our pensions, our, our health system will be paid if we don't manage to create the right spaces for people to work, to develop, to have this mentality of trial and error, to try to do things, and if they fail, to take it from the beginning. And again, I'm coming back to the main theme of my, of my, my discussion, the smart and connected spaces. I have, a, I have a bunch of slides, I think there are 10 slides there. I will, not, I, will not, uh, um, I, I will not go through slides. I think the main ideas are the one that I already said. How do we use technology to keep people together, to make them more productive, to make them collaborate, and to have this mentality of trial and error? Basically, this is the overall concept of, of the, the solution that Cisco has in this idea. But again, it's not only the commercial part. It's something that each one of you, as leaders, as managers, or as simple contributors, need to take into consideration when you think about the future. That's it from my side, thank you. I would, I would revert, uh, revert to, the, to the key points you made. Uh, we are growing into, into a new generation and this will fundamentally change the way we work, the way we live, the way we develop, and we need to look at how we provide this generation with the spaces that would allow them to be at their most productive and collaborative, if I'm right. Now, that would imply a lot of um, uh, changes in the current infrastructure, urban infrastructure, which we offer to this youth. 
maybe uh, Mr. Stefan Baciu would illuminate. Thank you. First of all, thank you to Aspen Institute for uh, inviting me here. It's a, it's a delight to be present here, and I, I sense a um, really high level of energy, and I, it's impressive to, to participate to it. Uh, my name is Stefan Baciu. I'm leading a strategic direction within um, IBM um, uh, Romania for analytics. This is the direction where uh, the company is heading um, to basically infuse intelligence in every system, in every process, uh, in, in the way we operate and in the way we um, uh, do business and uh, engage with, uh, with um, other parties. Um, we started this, uh, th this journey of uh, infusing um, uh, smart uh, approach and, and smart um, systems into uh, every uh, industry or um, um, operation in 2008, basically. And um, we're looking uh, to uh, a tremendous growth in, uh, in this approach. Basically, we're, we're not now going into um, selling or uh, pro proposing different uh, different projects, but trying to um, interconnect uh, uh, the systems and and the businesses and the people in order to extract and to use the the intelligence in uh, in this system. So, um, as uh, my four speaker were, were um, telling, there are a lot of uh, intelligent uh, sensors, intelligent systems. We are here to har harness this intelligence and this um, uh, um, uh, data to make them uh, more intelligent. Uh, we are the, 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 um, uh, now in a unique position that we have uh, uh, a lot of data coming from uh, everywhere, but we um, very often say we are um, uh, data rich and, uh, and uh, information poor. Um, there were ideas um, related to um, uh, how we can be more creative, how we can be more uh, interconnected. Um, I think um, with, with the pool of resources that we have right now in, in Romania, we, we don't lack and we can compare with uh, anyone in terms of creativity. What I think we should um, uh, engage more, more deeply is into taking the action, into making this uh, happen. Uh, only us as uh, IBM have more than 1,500 uh, 1, people that are um, uh, working from Romania and uh, basically shaping the future of, uh, of this corporation. We are uh, developing here products for the worldwide uh, uh, usage. So in terms of creativity, I think there are a lot of ideas, there are a lot of um, uh, people who who want to, to drive these ideas, uh, all we need, in, and uh, getting back to Bogdan with the, the, the legal uh, uh, framework, we need the, the legal and the um, uh, operational framework to make this uh, happen, to put these ideas uh, to work. And in terms of um, smarter city approach that, that, that we have, um, we can um, basically take uh, the, the, the role of uh, advisor to a municipality and connect all the, all the um, uh, critical systems, the, the transportation, the um, uh, emergency systems, the uh, healthcare, the, the different projects that, that they have. So uh, it all becomes transparent. Um, it all becomes um, uh, synchronized. So for example, if we're digging on a, a road to change a pipe, why not? Uh, change also some other type of uh, ins infrastructure, you know, electrical. If there's an event happening in, in the city, like, uh, I don't know, concert, we should uh, be able to uh, prepare with, with the, the transportation infrastructure, with the, the, the parking, with the emergency uh, situation. So it all becomes um, um, natural in uh, dealing with this kind of activities. It all becomes transparent. Yeah? and uh, uh, collaborative, yeah? So, so, so the citizen can influence and can uh, be participant to the life of, uh, of each city. This is where uh, we are at the moment, and uh, the good thing is that we are prepared uh, with uh, local resources, yeah? So we have a lot of uh, smart people working uh, here already. All we need is to, to take the next, the next step and making things uh, happen.
Thank you very much. Um, well, that was quite an emphasis put on uh, the intelligent resources, which either we have to create or to gather in big data or use in action in order to improve the whole infrastructure and the management of the cities. Um, I, for myself, can remember the past Robbie Williams concert where I could have used the smarter city and the IBM systems. But um, I think uh, equally to how people uh, work and create is important how they live. And speaking of intelligent resources, we have uh, here uh, Claudio Butaco, uh, maybe uh, a very representative uh, uh, type of the new uh, Romanian uh, entrepreneurs, thinkers, together with his team in Solar Decathlon, together with Mihai Pasti, which I know is in the hall, and ask him to say hi to everybody. Uh, you will see quite a revolutionary project. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to be here. Uh, I'm pretty glad that uh, you sum up, uh, let's say, my, me and Mihai's last five years, let's say. Yeah, we're uh, just a dreamer, or dreamers, let's say. I would like to invite you to watch a short presentation movie. There are some sequences of uh, eight seconds, like Dorin Pana said before, no? I think it's good. <laughs> so uh, please enjoy for two minutes this movie. It's a special club. They can do more than eight seconds. <laughs> okay, thank you. Because we are fed up with concrete and the coldness among people, nature for comfort, for community, for the city, for our future, built and lived according to nature. sustainable urban strategy and by that we mean especially the decrease in mobility and low housing densification. I would like to, to show this flower and say that uh, you and I are not very different just like this flower is unique you are unique and we all have something special in us that makes us as beautiful. Do you think you know what makes you special? Because sometimes Life is cruel and shows us in different ways that uh, maybe we can uh, rip off or can break us in two and uh, throw us in the trash. Mr. Stanimir, fellow flowers, let me say you when I first broke, it was in 2012. After uh, coming uh, back home with the first participating team at Solar Decathlon competition, it's a worldwide competition regarding architecture and uh, solar, let's say, sustainable prototypes. And we were uh, coming home, me and Mihai and some other flowers, with a second prize in energy efficiency, with a second choice of public, uh, public choice. And uh, instead of celebrating in Romania, we had to reassemble the house after transporting it from Madrid for the new owner. That was very upsetting for us because uh, after reassembling the house, I went back to my hometown in Baku and I was speaking with, uh, I was preparing for the meeting with my parents because I d I've done two years of volunteering and the result was uh, in a neighbor's, because it's near Baku, the owner, in the neighbor's house. And uh, I was preparing to speak with my mother and uh, when I went at her, I looked at her, she looked at me, and I saw a tear in my mama's eyes. And I do know that uh, mothers have three types of tears. It's tears of joy, which is good. Tears of um, happiness or disappointing, and tears of shame. But for me, that was a lifetime changing moment. So I went to my father. Because uh, if you have an emotional mother, raise your hand if you have an emotional mother. Okay, now put them all together and you have my mother so you can understand when I saw a tears in her eyes. But if you have a cool dad, raise your hand if you have a cool dad. Now put them all together and you have my dad. So I was speaking with him and I told him that uh, this is the result. And he told me, son, 
over the past two years, you spent the uh, money which I gave it to you, and you intend on doing this furthermore. So stop. You should go and work and make a living because you can be a better man. Okay, so he gave a, f a phone call to a friend, and uh, he introduced me to it, and I had a job interview in Ploest. I met this, uh, this entrepreneur. He was building a PV plant, a photovoltaic plant, and uh, he told me something, because I understand that he's a special man, and he told me, boy, I see something in you, but I don't know what it is. But if you would like to work for me, maybe we can find what is this something. So I managed to work with him for one year. We finished the PV plant. It was a, such a great project. I earned a lot of money, but I was disappointed because the enthusiasm disappeared. I uh, missed all my colleagues from Prispub, the project where we were gathering architects, engineers, and from all other the universities for doing a multidisciplinary project. And uh, I felt lost. So I went back home to my father again. And I said, Father, I feel lost. And he said, Son, you're like your mother because uh, she feels lost when uh, she's, let's say, going for uh, that uh, buying stuff, clothes and everything. But uh, I can uh, convince you for dreaming further because I can see something in you. But I don't know what it is. So he told me, go and dream big because you have more qualities that I had, said my father, so it was an improvement for me. That's why me and Mihai and some other friends gather up and we had the proposal for the next competition, Solar Decathlon 2014, where we can see the, pro the prototype. It's a FDN house. We won uh, a special prize for sustainable. We are ambassadors on sustain sustainability in Romania and the Central and Europe and Southeastern Europe. Now we can, uh, let's say, uh, provide some information because it's the first research center of comfort conditions in Romania. We have plenty of people interested in gathering in this project. We have over 50 members, architects, engineers, software developers, communication people, and fundraisers. And now, some, some days, after a hard day, let's say, I'm talking with Mihai, and I'm telling him, Mihai, remind me, why did we start it all over again, this thing, because it's very tough? And he says, I saw something in you, but I still don't know what it is. And now I can... Uh, know for sure that I can rely on the support of FDN family because it's my family right now. And I'm pretty sure that in maybe in two or three years, you will be able to live in an FDN house because now we, ha we are developing a business plan in order to, let's say, to have the first residence of this type of solar houses. You saw some images right there. And I'm pretty sure that now I'm a dreamer. I can speak about my dream. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, when I look at you, I see something in you, but I don't know what it is. So thank you very much. Well, I don't know about you, but I have a pre-contract with these guys. So first house goes to me. But um, nevertheless, I think uh, Claudio raised an important point beyond his metaphorical question, that we all see something yet we don't know what it is. So from the point of view of the public policy and uh, of, the, of the public strategy, I would ask all the speakers to comment a bit, what's the next step? What, what should we do actually to bring to light that huge potential that we have either in creativity, either in networks, either in the incredible intelligent capacity of the, of the young Romanian crowd, or really the whole potential of the country. Would you? Y yes, so um, I think, uh, um, as I said, it's very important to um, have a framework that uh, puts together uh, uh, these assets, yeah, the public and the private, uh, the private resources that we have. 
uh, I think, and this was a very good example, uh, in this new world, uh, just remember when, you know, one of the key elements was the uh, inner drivers rather than external, than external uh, incentives. I think this is very important. Uh, and we have, I, again, the most important thing is to have this framework that put this together in form of, for example, public partner, uh, private partnerships. Uh, okay, we have a law. Uh, it's not very actionable. So I think we have to improve that in order to, because the essence of a PPP is basically not only financing, but also attracting knowledge, operating the specific project, but also attracting this new way of doing business uh, that people that are, dry, uh, are you know, attracted by these inner drivers. So for me, this is the, 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 the essential point to, <clears throat> to be able to create this framework in which this PPP to be actionable, bankable, and uh, pragmatically to be able to implement projects through these models. I, I was very impressed by your story, and I, I, we have to discuss about uh, about this uh, about this session. Um, so I, I'm I'm impressed also when whenever I see bright ideas, and and uh, and I think uh, we are full of bright ideas, and we are full of, of bright people, and uh, and also if you if you read, I don't know, you take take any any uh, ministry and go to their website, you will find the perfect strategy. And it was mentioned earlier that even the transportation. Uh, master plan was uh, was uh, re, re, uh, was fine tuned, and we have a perfect master plan. Um, and I see that uh, even this culture of entrepreneurship is being developed in Romania. Uh, we have, especially the millennials, that are are thinking more and more and in, in, in doing things. Um, but on the other hand, when I look at, at at the execution, when I look in Romania, when I look at the execution, uh, I almost become uh, Claudius' mother, so I almost start crying. We, we have a big problem with execution. Uh, we have a tendency, and uh, you just have to look in, in the last um, um, in the last months in the public sphere with with all the changes and. We, we have this, this tendency of executing whenever a tragedy is happening. And th this, is, this is painful. Uh, I mean, we, we have to find these moments and, 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 and pull together and start executing. Stop talking about strategies. We have them. We have best practices. We have the technology. We have everything. But we miss this execution. I personally don't know what what needs to be done uh, at, at the overall uh, at the overall public sphere. I think this this is a question that that the politicians need need to answer. Um, but I think that's something that can be done uh, particularly, but by each individual. Um, make a small step. So if you like his idea, talk to him and find out how you can improve your house. Uh, if you like Bogdan's idea, talk to him and see how exactly you can improve maybe the lighting in your in in, in your house or if you are in charge of a city of or or a company. Uh, make small steps. We need to start making more small steps and and execute uh, execute. This is our biggest pain point, in my opinion, my humble opinion. Thank you. What I feel it it's it's essential to to make the the next leap, and and we as Romanians are famous for you know burning the stages, right? Um, we are working and and uh, both in uh, in um, private and in uh, in uh, public sector in silos. Yeah. So uh, if if the the way uh, these um, individual silos would would be interconnected and would, would work and, and the, the flows and the processes would be um, leaner and, and simpler. Somebody was saying that the simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. I think this, this would, would foster a, a major, major growth. Yeah? Major, we, have, we have the potential, we have what it takes, but if we don't step out of this um, siloed approach, um, uh, I think we, we, we risk on uh, losing, losing the momentum. There's a second idea I want to, to emphasize on. Um, in states, for example, if you come up with a new idea, if you come up with um, a, a great project in mind, 
that is saying, okay, let's do it. I want to have the first mover advantage, yeah? Here, and, and it's not only the, the, the trait of Romania, it's the, the, the region. If you want to do something and you come up with a new idea, they say, show me where you did it elsewhere, yeah? And, and how, how, how uh, well did it go? There's, there's a slight <laughs> uh, uh, difference in, in mentality, but even with this approach, yeah, show me where, where we did it, we can, show, uh, we can show interesting projects, we can show um, uh, nice ideas. For example, um, we have a project in uh, Nigeria, yeah? uh, where they um, uh, put uh, some, uh, some sensors, yeah? so take a, a, a cheap phone, put it in um, uh, the garbage trucks that are moving all around the city every day, and that phone um, un, uh, is able to uh, register the, the potholes on the road, the, where uh, the, the, the traffic slows down, yeah? And you have a complete map of, uh, of the city um, um, infrastructure in terms of where are the bottlenecks, where are the, uh, the, the needs to, to uh, you know, um, refurbish the, the street. So just, just simple idea and very, very easy uh, technologically to, uh, to be done, yeah? That's, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to convey. To conclude, uh, I would like to say that FDN project, my project, and uh, I was just saying that we were broken many times, but uh, in our life, let's say, there were plenty of people and companies that were able to reach in the trash, remember the flower, and piece up our together and make us whole again. So it depends of uh, what my previous speaker said, that you should talk with everybody, make the synergies, make it happen, because we are the future, and I'm saying this because I'm assuming it. So uh, please, let's talk. Udyo, I do have a difficult question for you. Um, you are now, you're having a double quality, or at least uh, as far as I remember. Um, what's, what's the look from the other side? Because it, it does take two to tango. So um, also my, my questions was, were, was regarding the public policy approach. Is there o openness there? Uh, what's the mindset? Okay, I think you refer to my uh, the other uh, project, and my boss is not still here, no? <laughs> okay, I started a collaboration with the um, Minister of Energy. So um, I'm the personal advisor of Secretary of State Christian Bushu, and regarding the renewable, renewable energy and uh, let's say the infrastructures for young people to get in and uh, come with the mentality that thinks outside the box, I think it's uh, very supportive, and uh, it's quite a nice thing that they've done. And I'm pretty sure that it will continue furthermore, and some other ministers, I encourage that. And I'm pretty sure that <laughs> I'm, I can see some of, of my colleagues right here, because we are preparing, we are studying right now, and there are, um, I, I and we are watching after mentors like you. So please let us... Uh, Please speak on a, of an eye at uh, what are you doing because this is very interesting for us. So thank you for this question, and it's it's a quite a positive approach, I think. Hope that will deliver even greater results. Before uh, handing over to questions from the hall, um, just one one observation or maybe uh, a request to comment. There was a lot of talk about uh, critical infrastructure in the in the panel. And uh, also a point about um, acting only upon uh, on the back of emergencies or, or, or tragedies. What do you think uh, Romania or Bucharest or all the major cities in, in Romania need in, term, in terms of, um, well, critical infrastructure thinking, developing, and, and risk mitigation? Because at the end of the day, uh, well, our world does look in a certain way. Would you start? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think in, in terms of um, thinking and designing, I mean, that, that, that's an easy task. Yeah? The bigger task is the willingness to do this and to have having the, the, the counterpart and the, the openness to do this. Because um, we, we are ready to now at this moment and with the level of, um, uh, of data and information that we have, we are now ready not only to uh, understand how, how the major systems like, like the city works, but also to predict 
several uh, uh, events, several incidents. Yeah, we can now um, uh, observe trends. We can now understand if some some events are happening together, or uh, there's a causa uh, causability uh, linkage between some some events. So, um, from from technology standpoint, we are there. What what is uh, needed is the uh, openness and the willingness to to sit on the, the table. Uh, to discuss and to uh, drive the, the, these, these new ideas. Um, yeah, just a short comment from my side. So um, I, I think, uh, the first point, um, of course there are many domains uh, um, regarding critical infrastructure and I think even yesterday there was an e yesterday uh, yeah, it was an event uh, at the parliament with critical infrastructure and I think the Romanian authorities at least are discussing very seriously about uh, the critical infrastructures in, in communications, in energy, so on and so forth. Of course, there are many things to be done, especially if you take into consideration the impact of digitization that I think we, we all uh, talked about this. So this is one point. There is progress. There are things that need to be done. We need to execute. There is another point that, that I would like to, um, to, to, to say here. Um, I think it's something that regards each one of us. We have to understand the fundamental thing. The systems that we have built are very sensitive and are very stretched. Our behavior and expectations are very sensitive and very stretched. Uh, think about the fact if, if the light stops for three days, something which was normal, I don't know, 25 years ago, or 50 years ago, two generations ago, what would be the impact on our lives? So I think that um, we have to look at the authorities and, 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 and the forces that are governing the society, how they react to these kind of things. But on the other hand, we have to look at ourselves and how well prepared are we to react to, to any kind of crisis. Um, if you look at the overall, the world right now is like a plane uh, which is flying high speed. Uh, has the sensation that it's flying parallel to the Earth, but um, I think it's a little bit pointed to the Earth. If you take into consideration environment, consumption, etc., etc., so I think that this is something that we all need to realize and start making the small steps. Even I don't know, stopping the water when we brush our teeth uh, uh, in the morning. This is one, one, one small step. Um, yeah, one comment also from, from my side, um, and I will build up uh, on the discussions uh, that uh, we had last night during the dinner, which I think was very interesting, and it was about trust. Trust between <coughs> different um, entities, people, uh, people engaged in different sectors of activity. Uh, while, as we said, we need to build this bridge and to make this knowledge transfer from private to public sector, public sector has of course to be open and to create the right environment however also us from private sector i think we should um, team up uh, and i think on the on a sectorial way we should express clearly ourselves and help also the 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 the, the, the government um, in identify the strategic objective of this sector. Of course, as we discussed, not, you're not talking about a lobby for a, a certain uh, company, but uh, you know, discussion on, on the sectorial one. And I think, I also worked in IT, and I think IT is a success story from this perspective in Romani uh, Romania, because uh, it succeeded to have, you know, uh, to express themselves as a sector, some strategic objectives, which I think the governments whichever it was understood. I think in other sectors, because now I'm in lighting sector, it's a different sector, I think we still have a long way to go to achieve the same thing. And this is uh, probably uh, uh, true for a lot of sectors. So this is, again, a change of mentality for ourselves to, okay, competition is key. key. Uh, however, of course, on strategic objective, I think on sectorial way, we have to, to, to have common objectives in order, in order to move forward. And this is a change of mentality.